Hello, welcome, welcome to the exciting world of computers. Whether you are a, a, a complete beginner or looking to brush up on the basics, we are here to guide you on your journey in the into the digital realm. realm. And uh, we're going to start with uh, defining what a computer is. At its core, a computer is a powerful uh, electronic device that processes data to perform various tasks. It is uh, a super smart assistant that can handle everything from simple calculations to complex solving problems. Remember, everyone starts somewhere and it is okay to take it one step at a time. So grab your seats, get comfortable, and let's embark on this exciting adventure together. If you have any questions, feel free to uh, leave them in the comments section. Now, let's dive in. Now, think of a computer like a really smart and fast uh, helper that can do all sorts of things for you. It is not just a machine. It is like a super smart assistant that follows your instruction to get things done. When you give a computer a task, it processes information at incredible speed like doing a quick math and uh, solving a tricky problem. It can also remember a lot of information, just like your memory. And it's always ready to help you with whatever you need. So whether you are playing game, writing document or browsing the internet, your computer is there to make everything easier, faster. Like It's just like having a super smart friend that never gets tired. Now we're looking at the different types of computer. Um, different types of computer. Now computer comes in various types, each designed for specific purpose and catering for different uh, computing needs. We are gonna be talking about a uh, um, few types of computer, but our focus is gonna be the macro computer or the personal computer. Now, um, one of the type of computer we have is the personal computer or what we know as the PC. The personal computer, uh, commonly known as the PC, are designed for individual use. They are versatile uh, machines used for general computing tasks, such as word processing, web browsing, gaming, and entertainment. Example of uh, personal computers are our desktop computers, laptop, or troubles, and um, two-in-one device, all two-in-one device, all of this fall under the con uh, category of a personal computer. Now, uh, think of a personal computer as your own smart helper. It is like having a super versatile assistant that can help you for all uh, sort of things like writing documents, playing games, or just browsing the internet. When we say personal, we mean it is yours, just for you. There are different types of personal computers, like the big one that sits on the desk, which is the desktop, or the smaller one you carry around, which we know as the laptop. So uh, some, uh, some even transform into tablets, or your smartphone, they are all computers. So a personal computer is like your tech buddy that always uh, that is always ready to help with whatever you want to do, either work, play, or just have fun. Now, we'll be looking at uh, the second type of computer, which is the server. Uh, servers are computer designed to manage network resources and provide services to other computers on the network. They are optimized for performance, reliability, and often uh, uh, operate uh, without a graphic user interface, which we know as a GUI. Later on, I will explain what GUI is briefly. 
examples of the of a server are the web server, the file server, the database server, and the email server. Yeah, these are the common type of the server we have. Just imagine a server as a powerful team member in a big office. Its main job is to handle and share important stuff among all other computers in the office. Unlike your personal computer, a server doesn't have a fancy screen or graphics. It is like uh, a behind the scene uh, hero. It works hard to make sure everyone in the office can access the file they need, use share printer or visit website. Um, the server is like the engine that keeps things running smoothly. So a server is like a special computer that helps uh, the whole office work together better by managing uh, and sharing resources. It is strong, it is reliable, and focus on keeping everything connected, even if you don't see it doing the job. Now, like I said, what is GUI? Uh, GUI is a graphic user uh, interface. It's a user interface that uses uh, visual elements such as icons, buttons, and window for user interaction. It replaces test-based command with point and click action. Making, uh, making system more user-friendly. GUIs often feature a uh, desktop um, uh, metaphor allowing users to organize files like uh, physical documents. They are intuitive, intuitive, accessible, and widely used in operating systems like Windows, uh, Macintosh uh, operating system, which is the Mac OS and Linux, as well as application that employ graphic control for ease of interaction. Now let's imagine your computer or phone, like a visual space where you do things. And a graphic design, uh, a graphic design user interface or the GUI is like the visual way you interact with that space. Instead of typing commands, you use pictures and symbols like icons and buttons to tell your device what you want. It is like uh, navigating through a digital world where you can click on things, move things around, and organize things just by using your mouse or touch screen. So the user graphic user interface make, makes using your computer or phone much easier because you don't have to uh, remember complex command. It is friendly. Um, it is friendly visual way for you to communicate with your device and get getting things done. Now, the third type of computer we have is the mainframe computer. The mainframe computer are large, powerful machines capable of handling complex and high volume computation tasks. They are often used in large organizations for critical business uh, application. Mainframe excels uh, in multitasking handling numerous transactions simultaneously and supporting multi-users. They are highly, they are, they have high processing power and uh, extensive memory. Now, um, imagine a, a, a mainframe computer as a super duper brain for really big companies. It is like the superhero of computers. So in this big company where a lot of people are using different tasks, the mainframe is like the super brain that manages everything. It is excellent at handling many jobs at the same time, like keeping tracks of a gazillion transaction, making sure everyone can use the computer system and having a super good memory to store tons of information. Think of, uh, of it as the powerhouse that helps the memory to do really uh, important things smoothly. Why your regular computer at home is like a helpful friend, a mainframe is the superhero behind the scene, making sure everything in the big company run uh, super efficiently. Now, the fourth computer we'll look at is uh, the we have is a supercomputer. The supercomputer are at the forefront of uh, computational power and are used for highly complex and uh, resourceful, intensive tasks such as scientific simulation, weather forecasting. And nuclear simulation, supercomputers have massive processing power, parallel processing capability, and advanced architectures to perform calculation at extreme high speed. Now, uh, picture, uh, picture a supercomputer um, as this 
um, superhero of all computer, like the iron, it is like the Iron Man suits, but for really intense, uh, in, uh, really intense uh, tasks. So when sci scientists or experts have super hand problems to solve, like predicting the weather, simulating nuclear reaction, or doing really co complicated mathematics, they call in the supercomputer. It is like a genius, a genius friend who can crunch uh, numbers crazy fast. So the supercomputer is not just strong, it's like having a hundred brain working together at the same time. It is good at what it does, that it helps us understand the world better, predict things accurately and solve problems that would have uh, that would take regular computers forever to solve. In simple terms, I was, it would say that a supercomputer is like the superhero of calculation, tackling the toughest problem and making things possible that we could do we couldn't do otherwise. Now the fifth one is the embedded system. The embedded system are a special, uh, specialized computer designed to perform dedicated function within a larger system. They are integrated into everyday device and machine to control specific tasks. Examples of uh, 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 microcontroller in appliances, automotive uh, control system, smart devices, and industrial automation system. These are examples of the embedded system. Now let's think of embedded system like tiny um, smart helper hidden inside everything, making them work better. Imagine your microwave or your car. Inside them, there's a little tiny computer, almost like a brain, specifically uh, viewed to do one important job very well. So the embedded system, your uh, microwave knows how to heat your food perfectly and uh, the one in your car knows how to control things like brake and engine performance. These special computers are like a uh, uh, secret agent. They don't look for regular computers. They don't, look, they don't look like regular computers, but they are everywhere, quietly making sure everything runs smoothly. So embedded systems are like the clever mind behind the scene, turning your appliances, cars, and many other things into smart gadgets. So the sixth one we're gonna talk about is uh, the sixth type of computer we have is a uh, workstation. Workstation are highly uh, performance computer designed for specialized tasks such as computer edit design card, which is a card, graphic design, scientific modeling, and video editing. The workstation have powerful processors, advanced graphics, uh, graphics capability, and uh, ample memory to handle demanding application. Now, we think think of a, a um, workstation as the superhero of computer that has special power for really top jobs. Imagine you have a friend who is uh, incredible at drawing or designing things on a computer. To help them do their magic, they need a special kind of computer, and that is what we call a workstation. So a workstation is like a computer on steroids, but for creative and complex tasks. It is not uh, your everyday computer. It is a powerhouse designed for things like making stunning graphics, designing buildings, doing advanced science experiment on the computer, or editing very cool videos. These workstations are like artist secret tools. They have a super fast brains, an amazing ability to handle the most challenging jobs in a blink. So if you need to do something really fancy on a computer, you call in a workstation, the superhero of specialized uh, tasks. Yeah. So the number seven type of computer we have is the mini computer, which is also the mid-range computer. The mini computer or mid-range computer fill the gap between the mainframe and personal computers. They offer a moderate processing power and are suitable for departmental or small business use. While the term mini computer was more common in the past, many system, would, um, many system that would have been classified as mini computer are now encompassed by their categories. Now think of a um, um, mini computer as a, a god, uh, god link of a, um, of computers, they are not too big like the super powerful mainframe, and they are not too small like the personal computer. They are just right in the middle. Imagine you have a small company or a specific department in a 
big office. Instead of uh, uh, using a massive computer that's uh, almost uh, like a giant brain or just a regular computer, you might choose a mini computer. It is like a perfect size and strength from handling the important tasks that a smaller group need. Now, the term mini uh, computer was used more in the past, but today we might call them something else. It's like saying, hey, we have um, the ideal size computer that, that is not too big or too small, just perfect for our needs. Mini uh, computers uh, are just, right, uh, the, just the right solution for those in between situations in the computer world. Now, the, the microcomputer, which is what we are looking focusing on today, the term microcomputer is often used interchangeably with um, um, the personal computer. Microcomputer are small scale computer that uses microprocessor, making them suitable for personal and small business use. The desktop computer, the laptop and tablet are all example of a micro computer or, or the personal computer. These different type of computer cater to diverse needs from personal tasks to complex scientific calculation and large scale uh, data processing. The choice of a computer type depend on the, on the factors such as intended use, uh, processing power requirement and the specific task it needs to uh, perform. So we are looking at uh, the components of a computer. Now, the, we have the various components that makes up, uh, various parts that make up the computer. Now, number one is the CPU or the central processing unit. Think of it uh, as the brain of the computer because it executes instruction and process data. Imagine your computer is like a superhero and this, um, the central processing unit is, is the brain. So when you ask your computer to do something like open or open a, open a program or play a game, it is the CPU that makes it happen. The CPU is like the smart decision maker taking your command and doing all the thinking and calculation needed to carry out those tasks. Just like your brain helps you think. Remember, the, the brain helps you think, remember and process information. The CPU does the same for your computer. Uh, it is um, the go-to hero for making sure everything runs smoothly and quickly. So next time you're using your computer, know that the CPU is the real brain behind the scene making all things happen. Now, the second one is, the second component is the memory. Um, the memory, which is also known as the random access memory. This is the short term memory that helps the computer run programs quick, quickly. Think of your computer memory, the RAM, as the shortest term memory kind of uh, like, kind of like a work desk. When you open a, a program or a file, your computer needs a place to quickly jot down and process information. That's where the RAM comes in. It is like the desk space where your computer works on tasks. The more RAM your computer has, the more things it can do at the same time without slowing down. So if you have a lot of programs open, it is like having many paper on your desk. With small RAM, your computer can handle all these stacks smoothly. But just like a desk, when you turn off your computer, everything on the desk, that is the RAM, gets cleared out, making room for new tasks when you start it up again. In simple term, RAM is, uh, is the quick access memory that helps your computer work on tasks effectively and without getting bogged down. So the next one is, uh, the next uh, component is the storage. The storage is uh, similar to your brain uh, long-term memory. This is where the computer store data like files and application. Now think of your computer storage as uh, the its long-term memory, like a filing cabinet where it uh, keep all its important stuff. When you save file, install program or store photos. It, it is like putting those things into the filing cab cabinet. 
the more storage your computer has, the more things it can remember and keep for the long, over long time. So if your computer is a superhero, the storage is it is a personal archive holding on to everything it needs, like documents, uh, pictures, and and apps. Even when you turn it off, whether it is song, video, or important document, your computer storage is the place where it keeps them safe. So, so for you to access it whenever you you need it. In simple terms, storage is like the long uh, memory bank where your computer stores and retrieve all the information, important information it needs to do the job when it, it, it wants to. So the number four is the input device. These include your keyboard and mouse and um, that allows you to interact with the computer. Now think of the input device like the tool you use to talk to your computer. Imagine your computer is like a friend and you want to tell it what to do. Your keyboard and your mouse are the way you have a conversation with it. The computer is like your typing pool. Whenever you want to write something or give it a command, the keyboard is like your typing pool. Whenever you want to write something or give it a command, you use it. And the mouse help you to point and click on things on the screen, like opening program or clicking on links. So when we say input device, we are talking about the tools you've used to input or give information to your computer. They are like uh, translators between you and your computer, making sure it understands what you want to do. Whether it is typing an email or clicking on a, uh, a video, your keyboard and mouse are your go-to uh, booty for talking to your computer. Now, the fifth one is the output device. The common examples of the output that are the monitor, the printer, which display or, or produce information. Now, think of the output device as the way your computer talks back to you. When you are using your computer, you want to see and hear what it is doing. Output devices are like computer, uh, the computer way of communicating back to you. So the monitor is like your computer TV screen. It shows all the pictures, all the text and videos. So when you watch a movie or read an article on your computer, it is the computer, the monitor making it visible to you. Now, if you want a, a, something in a physical form, like a paper document, that, that's where the uh, printer comes in. They take, uh, they take what's on your computer screen and put it on paper. In simple terms, Output device are like, like the computer way of talking to you. The monitor lets you see what's happening and the printer helps your computer to turn things into real physical copies. They are like the storyteller of your computer world. So now we'll look at, uh, the next thing we're looking at is the hardware and software. Hardware, um, the, the computer is made up of, um, uh, two um, parts, the hardware and the software. So now the, the software are the program apps and operating uh, system that enables the computer to perform specific tasks. Let's think of the software as a director and actors that make your computer sh uh, show run. Imagine, um, your imagine your computer as a stage ready to perform different tasks. Then software is like the script and the actor. It tells the computer what to do and how to do it. So when you want to write a document, you use a word processing software like uh, Microsoft Word, then uh, like the Microsoft Word. Then if you want to play game, there's a gaming software. And to make everything run smoothly, there's, a, an, uh, there's an operating system like um, Windows, Windows, Mac OS, and um, which is like the director managing the whole production. So I would say in simple terms, software is a set of instruction that turns your computer into a versatile performer. Whether it is creating, playing, organizing, each software program is like a specific app in the grand show of your computer capabilities. Now that we are talk we're going to talk about the hardware, 
the hardware is the physical component like the monitors, the keyboards, the keyboards, the CPU that you can touch and feel. Now think of the hardware as a physical stuff that makes your computer like its body parts. Imagine your computer as a robot or a superhero. The hardware is like its body, things you can see and touch. So the monitor is like its face, showing you everything. The keyboard and the mouse are like the hands, helping you give command. The CPU is the brain inside, doing all the thinking and processing. So when we talk about hardware, we mean the actual physical component that makes your computer real. It is everything you can touch, like the screen, like the key, the keyboard, and all the parts inside the inside that works together to make your computer do amazing things. So in simple time, hardware is a tangible side of your computer, the physical superhero that interacts with the computer. So now we we are moving forward. We are going to talk about the operating system. The operating system, also known as the OS, is like the manager of your computer. It controls hardware, runs application, and ensures everything works smoothly. Popular example of operating software, in software include the Microsoft window. This is uh, the logo here. The Mac OS, the Macintosh OS, and the Linux distribution. I will also have one, which is the Unis. So, um, Think of the operating system as the manager or the boss of your computer. Now imagine your computer is like a big office with different tasks and worker. The operating system is like the boss who makes sure everything runs smoothly. It tells the computer parts like the monitor, the keyboard, and the CPU how to work together. It also manages the software, the, the, that's the program and the, and the app you use every day. So when you want to open a program or do something on your computer, the operating system is the one that is making it happen. It is like the behind the scenes superhero coordinating all the action and making sure everything does the job uh, properly. Then uh, the popular operating system like the window, like the window, the window, the Microsoft window, the Mac OS, and the Linux um, are the different type of bosses that have their own way of running things. They are the leader making your computer a well-organized and uh, effective workplace. So let us explore this popular operating system in more details. The window, Microsoft Windows is developed by Microsoft. Um, it's developed by Mac Windows is one of the most uh, widely used operating system for personal computers. Windows uh, features a graphic user interface with icons, windows, and tags, and a tags bar, providing a user-friendly environment. Windows also supports a vast array of software applications, making it a popular choice for gaming, productivity, and business application. There are also various versions of Windows, including Windows uh, 10, Windows 11, which is a widely adopted uh, version. Now let's think of window like a friendly face and uh, organizer of your computer. So imagine your computer is like your personal space. Window is like the manager of that space. It makes everything look nice and organized with pictures, icon, windows you can windows you can open to see and a tags bar at the bottom to switch between tags easily. So now, when it comes to doing things on your computer, playing games, writing documents, or using app, window is one is the one that makes it uh, all possible. It understands and talks to a lot of different programs, like uh, like a bilingual, multilingual friend who can chat with everyone. That's the work of the window. And just like uh, there are three versions of your favorite app, there are also different version of uh, Windows. Think of it like getting new and improved version of your favorite game. Window 10, 11 is one of those cool and popular versions that many people use. So Windows, have it we have to have it at the back of our mind in simple terms that window is like helping money, is like a the helpful manager that makes your computer easy to use and compatible with a lot of uh, cool stuff you want to do. So the second one we're going to talk about is the Mac OS. 
the Mac OS is the operating system developed by Apple. And it's designed exclusively for Apple's Macintosh computer, known, uh, known for its uh, sleek and visually appealing interface. Mac OS features the dock, the finder, and the menu bar. It emphasizes ease of use. And um, ease of use, Mac OS um, supports a variety of uh, software and is known for its integration with other Apple products and um, services. It is widely used in creative industry like uh, graphic design and video editing. Mac OS is often um, praised for its uh, stability and performance, providing a smooth and uh, responsive user interface. Now, um, let's think of Mac as the special operating system made for just Apple fancy computer. So imagine your computer is like a stylish and uh, unique space. Mac is the Mac OS is this special manager that makes it look super cool and work uh, really well. It is known for having a slick design, like having a stylish room with cool furniture. Now, when you use a Mac, an Apple computer, you see things like the dock, the finder, and the menu bar. These are like the special features that make your computer easy to navigate and look awesome. So it's like uh, having cool gadget in your room that you can easily reach and use. And just like you might have a favorite set of toy that works well together, Mac uh, OS play really uh, nicely with uh, other um, um, Apple products. If you have an iPhone, an iPad, and other Apple gadgets, they all get along and share things easily. People who do creative things like uh, uh, designing graphics or editing video really love uh, Mac OS because it helps them to do their work smoothly. It is like having a magical workspace that makes everything stable and perform really well. So we'll say in simple terms that Mac OS is like the stylish and the reliable manager that makes your Apple computer a joy to use, especially if you're creating cool stuff. Now, the next one is the Linux distribution. Linux, Linux, this is logo here. Linux is an open source um, um, like operating system. Various organizations and uh, community have created Linux distribution by uh, combining the Linux kernel with different software packages. Linux offer a range, uh, range of desktop environments such as Genome, KDE, SFCE, providing flexibility and uh, customization option for users. Linux also promotes open source uh, software, allowing users to access and modify the source code. It is widely used for servers and distributions like Ubuntu, Fedora, and Debian. We cater for desktop user. Uh, Linux is uh, known for its robust security features and stability, and uh, making it a popular choice for server and uh, mission critical system. Let's take a uh, think of Linux as the superhero of operating system that is all about sharing and customization. So imagine your computer is like a cool playground, and Linux is the superhero in charge. Uh, unlike some other operating system, Linux is like an open book. It shares its secrets with everyone and all the people all around the world can add their own creative touches. Now, the way Linux look and feel can be uh, changed by users. It is like having different themes or styles for your background. Some people might like it colorful, some might prefer it uh, um, dull. Mm -hmm. Linux lets you pick what suits you best. But what makes Linux really special it is, uh, is, it, is in its uh, philosophy. It loves sharing and it likes saying, hey, everyone, come get, come, come get on and see what I'm doing. If you have cool idea, let's make it better together. That's why it is used uh, a lot. It is used a lot by big uh, uh, computer servers and also for personal computer. Popular version of uh, Linux like Ubuntu, Fedora, and Debian are like different flavor of ice cream. Everyone has their favorite. And because Linux is a super good, is super good at keeping things safe and stable, 
it's it's like having a superhero protecting your uh, playground and from uh, anything bad. So in simple terms, I'll say that Linus is the superhero of superhero operating system that that is open for everyone to play with, customize and make even better. It is cool and um, and sharing friends of computer world. So the fourth one round is uh the units. The unit is a, is a powerful and multi-user operating system that has influenced many other operating systems, including Linux and the BSZ, Barclays uh, software distribution. Originally, uh, Unis has a, a command line interface and modern version uh, offer graphic interface as well. Uh, Unis is... Um, widely used in server environment and large scale computing due to its stability and security features. Its foundation, uh, it is the foundation for many other operating systems. And it, I, that it adheres to various standards, making it highly uh, portable across different uh, hardware architecture. Now let's think uh, of uh, Unis as the, the wise uh, grand parents of operating system that has influenced many others. So picture your computer world as a family tree. The unit is like the wise grandparents at the top and it has children and grandchildren like uh, Linus and BSD who learn a lot from it. Now, back in the days when computer we are just starting out, Unis uh, spoke a special language called a command line interface. It was like talking in secret code to tell the computer what to do. Today, it's uh, also uh, learn how to speak in much, much more modern way with pictures and buttons like other operating systems. Unis is like uh, the rock fund, solid foundation of a big, impressive building, the kind of building that houses servers and run really important computer tasks. It is known for uh, being super stable and safe, which is why it is to go choice for big uh, companies and important computer system. And because uh, Linux is, uh, is, is a good uh, rule follower, it follows certain standard, making it like a well-behaved guest that can easily visit different type of computer. In simple time, I'll say that uh, Unis is the wise grandpar grandparent that taught many other operating system how to be stable, secured and versatile. It is like the experienced elder in the computer uh, family, making sure things run smoothly for everyone. Why uh, Linux may not be uh, prevalent on um, as prevalent on personal computer as some other operating system like uh, Windows, Mac OS, and uh, Linux, but uh, Unis remain a significant player, particularly in the enterprise and server environments. Because many uh, critical systems, including server powering websites, financial institutions, and large scale computing uh, environment, rely on Unis and its uh, various uh, flavor. Now, <clears throat> these uh, operating systems cater to different user preference, uh, their need, and computing environment. The choice of an operating system often depend on factors such as user experience, uh, software compatibility, security, and the specific tasks a user wants to accomplish. Now, the next one we'll be looking at is the information processing circle. The information processing circle, also known as the data processing circle or the CPU circle, is a series of, um, is a series of uh, steps that computers follow to process data and perform tasks. It is a fundamental cost concept in uh, computer architect and uh, include the following step. The, the process begin with an input, uh, the input uh, stage here, yeah? the input stage where the computer collect data um, or instruction from external sources such as uh, typing on a keyboard, clicking the mouse or scanning a barcode, a common form of input. Input devices such as keyboard, my sensor, or other um, peripheral provide the necessary data for processing. Once the data is collected, it is temporarily stored in the computer memory, which is the, RAM, the random access memory. The memory is used to hold data 
that the CPU, which is the central processing unit, needs to assess uh, quickly during the processing stage. Now, the uh, uh, storing data in memory allows for quick retrieval and manipulation by the, the CPU. The CPU processes the data according to the instruction stored in the computer memory. This involves performing calculations, logical operation, and executing instruction from the computer program. There's what we call the control unit and the ALU. The control unit manages the execution of instruction, and the arithmetic logic units perform arithmetic and logic operation. If the input is in number, the CPU may perform calculation like addition, subtraction, or multiplication. The process information, the process information is then sent to the uh, output device. These are the output device, the monitor, the printer, the speaker, such as the monitor, the printer, the uh, storage device to make the result available to the user or store them for future use. Displaying the result on a, uh, on a monitor screen, printing a document or saving a file to a storage device are common app output action. Now, let us imagine the information uh, processing circle as the recipe your computer follow to do things. The input, which is the input which is um, getting um, which is getting the ingredient. Imagine your computer making a sandwich first. You gather all the ingredient you need: bread, cheese, and maybe some veg vegetables. In the computer. In the computer world, this is like getting the information you want to work with, such as typing on your keyboard or clicking your mouse. Then why the in the processing, the processing that's making the, that's in making the sandwich. Now that you have the ingredients, you put them in together to make the sandwich. Similarly, the computer takes the information you give to it and start working on it. It might be to do calculation, organize data, or perform other tasks behind the scenes. Then the output um, stage, which is um, enjoying the sandwich, once the, which is also could be equated as enjoying the sandwich. Once the sandwich is ready, you get to enjoy the results. In the computer world, this is when you see something happening on your screen, like a document you wrote, or a game you're playing, or a, or a website you're browsing. Now the story, that saving some for later. If you want to keep part of your sandwich for later, you might store them in the fridge, in the computer world, this is like saving a file so you can open it again tomorrow or next. Now, imagine doing this, this whole process over and over, making different sandwich or uh, dishes each time. That's what the computer does. It follows the circle continuously, taking information, working on it, showing you the result, and saving files for later. It's like a chef in your kitchen, always ready to cook up something new. Now, in some cases, the system may provide feedback to the user or take a corrective act uh, action based on the result of the processing. The step ensure that the user is uh, informed of the outcome and make uh, uh, make decision or initiate further action. For example, if a user attempts to perform an operation that is not allowed, the system may display an error uh, message as feedback. These stages um, collectively form a continuous loop as computer constantly review new inputs, process information, produce output, and provide feedback. The speed and efficiency of this cycle are crucial factor in determining the overall performance of a computer. It is important to note that this cycle is a simplified representation. And in modern computer system, parallel processing, multitasking, and uh, complex our architectures contribute to more efficient and uh, sophisticated uh, information processing. So now this that leads us to the next stage, the features of a desktop computer. Now, we have uh, the physical component of a, a desktop computer. Uh, number one is we're gonna look at the monitor, which is this screen here you're seeing here, the monitor. The monitor or this display, is the visual output device that shows information generated by the computer. It is where users interact uh, with the graphic user interface, which is also known as the GUI of the operating system, and view content. 
the monitor display images, videos, text, and other uh, visual information. Now let's think uh, of the monitor as a screen of your computer where you see all the action. Imagine your computer is like a theater and the monitor is the big bright stage. Everything you want to do on your computer, like pictures, videos, and what you see, the world you see, are like the act of performing on the stage. So when you open a document, watch a movie or play a game, all the stuff appear on the monitor. It is like the window in your computer world. The monitor show you what's going on and you can interact with it using your mouse or your keyboard. In simple terms, the monitor is like a stage where your computer puts on a show just for you. It is where you see, you read, and enjoy all the things happening in your digital world. So the next one is the keyboard here, where my cursor is being, my cursor is pointing. So the keyboard is an input device with key for typing letters, numbers, and special characters. It is used for text input and interacting with various software applications. It allows users to input text and command into the computer. Now let's think of the uh, keyboard as a tool you can use to talk to your computer, like typing a message to a friend. Imagine your computer is your friend and the keyboard is like a special language you both understand. Each key on the keyboard is like different letters, is like a different letter, number or symbol. So when you press the key, you are telling your computer what you want it to do or say. So if you want to write a letter, you type the word using the keyboard. If you want to search for something on the internet, you use the keyboard or type or type in what you are looking for. It is like having a conversation with your computer by typing instead of talking. So in simple terms, the keyboard is your way of talking to your computer and telling it what you want it to do. Each keyboard is a special code. Each key is a special code that your computer understands, helping you write, search, and interact with all sorts of things on your computer. So the next one we're gonna talk about is the mouse. Where my, this is the mouse where my cursor is pointing. The mouse is a pointing device which uh, with buttons and a scrolling wheel. It is used to navigate the cursor on the screen and uh, interact with the graphic, graphical elements. It enables users to click, to drag, and interact with a graphic user interface. Now let us uh, think of the mouse as the magic one that um, help you control your computer. Imagine your computer screen is like a big canvas and the mouse is your paintbrush. So with the mouse, you can move a little arrow in the screen, this little arrow that is moving. And um, that arrow is like your way of pointing to things. When you want to click on something, it's, it is like tapping the mouse to say, hey, computer, do this. So now the mouse has button. When you click one, it is like pressing a button to select something. If you want to open a file, click on the link or play a, a game, you use the mouse to click on it. Now the, 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 the next one we, now the, if you are looking at um, if you are looking at the long uh, web page or document, you can use the wheel to move up and down easily. So in small, in simple terms, the mouse is your magical tool to point, click, and interact with everything on your computer screen. It is like uh, your paintbrush for the digital world, helping you navigate and make things happen with just a click. Now the next one is this um, system unit or the UPE, the CPU tower. This is where my, my cursor is pointing. It's called the system unit or the CPU tower. The system unit often it's often how it is often housed in a tower or case. It contains the internal component of the computer, which include the CPU, the motherboard, the RAM, the storage device house, and it protects the essential internal component of the computer. Now, let's think of the CPU units as the brain box or the heart of your computer. Imagine your computer is like a superhero and the system unit is its uh, super armor, special armor, keeping all the important parts safe and sound. This armor is usually in the form of a tower or case. 
and it holds everything your computer needs to work. Inside the armor, you have the CP, which is the central processing unit, yeah, which is like the brain doing all the thinking and calculation. The motherboard is like the computer cent command center, making sure everything works together smoothly. While the RAM is a short-term short memory and the storage device are uh, like the long-term memory, keeping things for the future. So when you turn on your computer, it is like activating your superhero. The system you need with its protective armor wakes up all the essential parts and get them ready for action. It is the place where the magic happens, making uh, your computer to do all the amazing things you want it to do. So in simple terms, the system unit is the hero super armor, holding and protecting the important gut of your computer so that it can be powerful, problem-solving friend you need in the digital world. So now we're looking at the webcam. So the webcam now, this is the webcam where my cursor is pointing on the, the monitor. So the webcam is up there above the monitor. That is the situation the, where the uh, webcam is always situated. A webcam is a camera designed to capture videos and sometimes audio. It's often used for video conferencing, online meeting, and live streaming. It captures video for communication and uh, multimedia purposes. So now, um, you uh, let's think of a webcam as uh, the eye and the ear of your computer for video and sound. Imagine you are having a video call with a friend or attending a virtual meeting. You can, uh, the webcam is like a tiny camera on top of your computer here, on top of your computer screen that captures you just like a camera captures uh, a photo. So it also captures sound like your voice or other sound around you. So when you are on a video call or doing a live stream, the webcam is the, is the one thing making sure others can see and hear you. Just like this, this uh, tutorial I'm doing, it is the webcam that is making sure that you can, you can hear me and uh, see my screen. So it's like a it's, um, little uh, reporting sitting on your reporter sitting on your computer sharing your videos and audio with whosoever you're talking to on the internet. In simple terms, a webcam is like uh, the eye and the ear of your computer, helping you communicate through videos and sound with friends, colleagues, or anyone else online. So now to have the cables, so the, is, the cable is not visible on, the, on this screen, but I'm going to explain what the cable and the connectors Ah, so the cable, the ver various cables and, con and connectors provide uh, powerful um, connectivity between the computer and its peripheria. They supply power and facilitate data transfer between computers and external devices. Let's think of uh, cable and connection as the power cord and communication line that connects, connect, uh, connect computer to each friend. So now we're going to look at, I think we have, yeah, this is the depth of the back where we have uh, power, uh, power cable connectors and the um, power cable connectors. So when you plug um, a cable to your co con uh, connector, a cable to your computer, they say, let's say a printer. It is like connecting a special phone line. Your computer and the printer can now chat and share information. The cable can only help them talk, but or can uh, not only help them talk, but also supply them with power. But now, how a charger pop, um, like how a charger powers off your phone. So in simple terms, um, cables and connectors are like bridge and power line that connect your computer to all its friends. They can make sure everyone can communicate and get the energy they need to do their job, whether it's printing a document, playing music, or charging your device. Understanding the different uh, parts of your desktop is essential for setting up, uh, for setting it up, using and maintaining the system. Each component play a specific role in the overall function of the desktop computer. Like here, we have the the microphone where the mic you can plug in the microphone, the speaker where you can plug in the the USB, and uh, where you can plug in the power cable. So. Without wasting much of our time, we'll move over to the next. It takes us to the next one, the component um, of a, a laptop. Now, 
a laptop is the portable uh, computer designed for uh, for ease of user mobility. It is uh, physical components. Its physical components are integrated into a single unit. Now, what do I? What am I trying to say? That uh, let's um, think. Uh, let's think of a, uh, a laptop as a portable powerhouse or a mobile office that you can carry around you. Imagine your regular computer at home, and then and then shrink it down and make it super lightweight. That's the that's a laptop. It is having a mini computer that you can take everywhere, whether it is to a coffee shop, a friend house, or even just to a uh, to the couch. So, what makes a laptop put is that everything it needs to work, like the screen, the screen here, the keyboard, and all other parts, is packed in one neat and slim package. It's like having your computer, your monitor, your keyboard, all in one place. And you can open and close it like a book. So when you are on the go and need to go get some work done, watch a movie or browse the internet, you can grab your laptop and you are good to go. So it's like having your personal computer in a handy, portable size, making it easier to use whether you want or not. So whenever you want, I mean to say. In simple terms, a laptop is like a mini computer that you can carry around. And it is perfect for people who are always on the move or just want to want the convenience of a computer in a compact form. So we looking at the the we're going to details to explain the components, the physical component of a laptop. Now we'll take uh we'll, now we'll look at the the screen, the laptop screen or the display. The laptop screen or display is an integral part of the device, which this is the laptop screen. The screen or display is an integral part of the device providing a visual interface for the user. It is an LCD or LED that carries, that can vary in size and resolution. It displays image, video, text, and other visual information. It is the primary output device for the laptop. The screen is the primary output device for the laptop. Now, let's think of the laptop screen as the window to your digital world. Imagine your laptop as a magical book. Then the screen is like the page of that book where you can, when you open your laptop, the screen comes to life and show up everything like pictures, videos, Word document, and all cool things your computer can do. The screen is like just any window. It's like a, it's, it's like a super clear, vibrant window that can display everything in great details whether you are watching a movie reading an article or video chatting with a friend it is the screen that makes it all visible to you in simple terms the laptop screen is like the special window through which you can see interact with all the exciting stuff on your computer it is the main way your computer talks to you showing you a colorful and dynamic uh, word right at your finger a tip. Now, the second one we're going to look at is the, the second component we'll be talking about is the keyboard. The keyboard on the laptop is a compact input device with keys for typing letters, numbers, and special characters. It is integrated into the laptop chassis, which allow users to input text and command into the laptop. It may, it may also include additional functions, keys, and a shortcut. So let, let us think of the laptop keyboard as a tiny typewriter that helps you talk to your computer, to your laptop. Imagine your laptop is like a little office and the keyboard is your desktop where you write uh, your desk, where you write things down. It is a compact version of a regular keyboard and all the keys you need, the letters, the numbers, the special card are right there. So when you want to write an email, type a document, or search for anything online, you can use the laptop keyboard. Each key is like a button that you press to make a letter or number appear on the screen. It is like having a tiny typewriter that lets you communicate with your laptop. Now, the laptop keyboard might have some special uh, keys for doing things quickly, like turning on the volume or opening a new tab in your browser. These are like uh, shortcuts, 
button that helps you do stuff without clicking around too much. In simple terms, the laptop key, uh, keyboard is your tiny writing desk where you press little button to talk to your uh, laptop and get things done. It's your, it's your personal typing tool in the digital world. So now we're going to the, the, the touch pad or the track where my hand is, where my cursor is move is is pointing at. So now the the touch pad is a small sensitive surface surface located below the keyboard. It serves as a pointing device, allowing user to control the cursor by moving their finger across the surface. It's fun, it's functioned as an alternative to a mouse, providing a convenient way to navigate and interact with the laptop graphical user interface. Now, let us, what am I trying to say? Let us think of the touchpad as the magic carpet of your, of your laptop. Imagine your laptop is a small kingdom and the touchpad is a tiny sensitive magic carpet. Right below the keyboard, instead of using a mouse, you can use the magic carpet to move the cursor um, of your laptop screen. So when you slide your finger across the, across the touchpad, it is like getting uh, gently guiding the magic carpet and the cursor on the screen. Follow and the cursor on the screen follow your lead. If you want to click on something, you can tap on the touch pad, just like you might tap on the magic carpet to make it do something special. It is a convenient way to navigate around your laptop without uh, needing a, a separate mouse. The touch pad is like a uh, personal. Uh, it's like a personal enchanted guy that helps you explore the digital kingdom inside your laptop. So in simple terms, I'll say that the touchpad is a magical surface that responds to your finger, making it easy to move around and interact with everything on your laptop without needing an extra device. So we'll be talking about the inbuilt uh, webcam. This is where, where the cursor is pointing, is where the webcam is located, above the, the screen of the laptop. Many laptops come with an inbuilt uh, webcam located above. It is located above the display or the uh, the screen. It is a small camera designed for video conferencing, online meeting, and capturing still images. It captures video and sometimes audio for communication and multi multi purposes. So let's think of the inbuilt camera on a top of a laptop as a tiny eye that helps you see and talk to others. Imagine your, your laptop is like a little friend and right above it, is a, the screen is a tiny eye. The, the built-in, that is the built-in webcam. The little eye can see you and everything around you. It is like having a tiny camera right on your camera, on your computer. Now, when you want to talk to a friend through video call or attend an online meeting, you don't need to add uh, anything extra. You just use the in, uh, built in uh, webcam it captures not only your video but something your sometimes your voice too just like the little uh, reporter capturing everything happening in front of your laptop so in simple terms the built in webcam is like the tiny eye on your computer that lets you to that allow you to have a face to face conversation with uh, over the with others over the internet it is your personal video communicator making it easy to connect with friends, family, or colleagues without needing any additional gadget. So we're talking about the speaker now. The speaker, laptop um, have inbuilt speaker. So the speaker, um, the speaker that provide audio output, the speaker uh, placement may vary, but they are typically placed near the keyboard. The speaker is placed somewhere here, near this keyboard, so um, it's placed uh, near the keyboard or the side of laptop. It produces sound for, uh, for multimedia content, music, video, and system alert. Now let's think of the uh, built-in speaker on a laptop as a sound uh, storyteller that brings your computer to life. Imagine your laptop is like a little theater and the built-in uh, speaker are the actors and musicians. They are the ones responsible for making all the sound you hear. Whether it is the background music in a movie, the voice in a voice call, or the sound effect in a game. These speakers are like a hidden performer located near the 
keyboard or the side of your computer. When you watch a video, listen to music or play a game, they start telling their story, making everything more exciting and um, enjoyable. So in simple terms, the built-in speakers are like the storyteller in your computer theater, creating all the sound that makes your digital experience come alive. So they are there to entertain you with music, sound effects, and voices, turning your computer into a little audio wonderland. So the next one we're not talking about is the, um, the microphone. Laptops are equipped with an uh, inbuilt uh, microphone, often located near the webcam. It's located near the webcam, that is the top of the screen, or within the chassis. It captures audio input for, for voice recording and communication. Uh, it records audio for uh, application like voice command, video command, video calls, or audio recording. Now, let's uh, think of the built-in microphone on a laptop as a tiny listener that helps you, that helps your computer hear and understands you. Imagine your laptop as a, just imagine your laptop as a friendly assistant, and uh, right inside it, the tiny ear, the built-in microphone. This tiny ear can capture everything you say, just like a little recorder. It is there, it is there to listen to your voice at any sound around you. So now, when you are making a video call using voice uh, command or recording audio, you don't need to attach anything extra. You simply use the inbuilt microphone. It is like having a tiny friend that listens to your words and makes sure your computer understands what you want. So in simple terms, the, in, the built-in microphone is like uh, the little listener inside your laptop helping you communicate with others through your voice. It is your personal audio assistant, making it easy to talk, give commands, and record things without needing any additional devices. So we're going to look at the, um, uh, the number seven now is that, unlike uh, which is this uh, system unit, the internal component, the system units com comprise of the in system units or the internal component. Unlike desktop computer, the internal component of a laptop include the CPU, RAM, the storage. They are all integrated into a single unit. House essentially, um, the house as essentially internal components, ensuring a compact and portable design. The system, the system units may have vent for heat uh, dissipation. So what am I trying to say is that. Think of the system unit and its internal components in a compound as the brain and the organ that makes your laptop work. Imagine your laptop as a little creature and the system unit is like the brain and organ all bonded up together. In a regular computer, these uh, brainy parts uh, might be spread out, but in a laptop, they are cleverly packed in a single unit. Now, just like you have a heart that pumps the blood and the lungs that helps you breathe, the system unit in a laptop has things like the CPU, that's the brain doing the thinking, the RAM, the, which is the short-term memory, and the storage, the long-term memory for keeping things. It is all neatly packed like the essential organ inside your body. To keep everything running smoothly, the system unit might have a tiny vent like a creature waiting um, a creative, like a creative way of breathing to cool, uh, to stay cool. This is important because, like us, computer can get warm when they work hard. So, in simple terms, the um, system unit is a, in a laptop is like the brain and organ that keeps everything ticking and making your computer function. So, it is the compact and portable powerhouse that helps your computer become, do, uh, become smart, quick, and ready for whatever you want to do. So, now we're talking about, we're looking at the battery. So, laptops have uh, a rechargeable battery that provides uh, power for portable use. The battery is uh, located within the laptop chassis. The battery allows the laptop to operate without being plugged into a power source. The battery life can vary depending on the usage and the laptop uh, model. So let's think of the battery in a laptop as the energy pack or the power reservoir. So imagine your laptop is like a, a little explorer and the battery is the energy pack. The energy pack is like a rechargeable battery stuck inside your laptop, ready to power it up whenever it is not plugged into a wall. So when you are sitting on a couch in a park or anywhere away from a power outlet, the battery kicks in. 
it is like a magic source that lets your laptop run without uh, needing a direct connection to electricity. So you can think of it as the reason your laptop can be a wanderer moving around wherever you go. Now, just like your phone battery lasts longer if you are not playing game all day, the laptop battery can life can vary. So if you if you are doing simple tasks like writing or browsing the internet, the energy pack lasts longer. But if you're doing heavy duty like stuff like gaming or video editing, it might end up it might use up the energy faster. So in simple terms, the the battery in a laptop is like a secret powerhouse that lets it uh, uh, be free and untethered. It's, it is what allows your laptop to go on adventure with you, providing the energy it needs to keep working even when there's no power outlet nearby. So now we're well, people talking about the, just like the desktop computer, the laptop also have power and uh, port and connectors. Um, um, laptop features various ports and connectors for connectivity. The common ports include the USB, the HD, HDMI, the audio jack, and the power connector. Uh, they facilitate connectivity with external devices such as the USB drive, the external monitor, the headphone, and the power sources. So let's think of the port and the connector on a laptop as its communication hub or connectivity door. Imagine your laptop, you just imagine your laptop as a friendly hub and all around its uh, east side are their special door. This door are port and uh, connector. It's, the connector is by the side. So each, uh, uh, each serving a unique purpose. For example, there's a door to your USB drive, another for connecting to a bigger screen, like your TV and some for plugging in headphone or speaker. Now, when you want to do something special, like adding extra storage with a USB or watching a movie on a bigger screen, you use this door. This door. So it is like telling your laptop, hey, let's connect to this. So each door has its own job. You can open multiple doors at once. If you need to charge your laptop, there's a special power door. If you want to connect to a camera, there's a door for that too. In simple terms, the port and the connector on a laptop are like uh, the door that your laptop talks to the outside world. So they help you connect to different devices, making it easier to share, listen, watch, and power up your laptop with all kinds of cool stuff. Now, the cooling system. We're talking about the cooling system now um, of the laptop. The laptop have a cooling system, typically consisting of fan and heat sink to dissipate heat generated by internal components. The cooling system prevents the laptop from overheating during prolonged use, ensuring stable performance. So let's think of the cooling system in the laptop as its internal AC conditioner or cooling breeze. So imagine your laptop as a little busy worker, just like us. When it works out, it can get a bit warm. That's when the cooling system comes in. It is like the magical breeze that keeps your laptop from getting too hot. Inside the laptop, there are tiny fan and special metal piece called heat sink. When your laptop works, this uh, component kicks in and, and uh, it is as if your laptop is breathing out fresh air and letting the breeze cool it down. It is like having, it's also like having a personal air conditioner just for your laptop. This cooling, cooling breeze is crucial because if your laptop gets too hot, it might slow down or even stop working. So the cooling system is like the superhero that ensures your laptop stay, stay cool and uh, perform well, even during long uh, hour of use. So in simple terms, the cooling system in laptop is like the secret air conditioner that makes sure your laptop doesn't get too hot. It keeps uh, things running smoothly and makes sure your laptop is always ready to tackle whatever tasks you throw at it. So understanding the physical component of a laptop is essential for user to operate, to operate it, maintain and uh, make informed decision about their portable computing devices. So now this take us, um, so the next slide, the computer mouse. So now um, the computer mouse uh, is a common input device that allows user to interact with graphic user interface and control the cursor on the computer screen. 
Now, let us think of the computer math as a magic pointer that helps you to do things on your computer. Imagine your computer screen as a big can digital canvas. Then your mouse is like a little magic one. When you move the mouse around your desk, it is as if you're moving, moving that magical pointer on that screen. Now, if you want to click on something, it's like tapping your magic wand on that spot. You can use the mouse to open file, click on icon, or even play again by pointing and clicking. It is like uh, having a tiny guy that helps you interact with everything on your computer. The mouse also have buttons. And when you press them, it's like giving command to your computer. For example, right clicking, right clicking mouse gives you option. Why the left uh, clicking is like saying, I choose this. So in simple terms, the, the computer uh, mouse is your magical guard that lets you point to things, click uh, on, on things and make your computer do what you want. It is like your digital assistant, making it easy to navigate and interact with all the cool stuff on your computer. So we'll be looking at the detailed explanation of the computer mouse, the physical design. Now the the number one we have been looking we'll be looking at the physical design. So now the compete the um, the mouse typically has a small ergonomic design that fits comfortably in our hand. It can uh, come in various shapes and sizes, including a uh, standard uh, two button model and more complex design with additional buttons. Uh, most mice have at least two buttons: the left button, the left button and the right button where my cursor is pointing. So it might also feature a clickable scroll wheel. This is the clickable scroll wheel, the one at the middle, while other may have additional button on the side for extra functionality. Let us break uh, down the physical design of a computer mouse into a simpler tab. Now, shape and size. Think of the, of the mouse like a tiny, comfortable friend for your hand. It is designed to be just like the right size on so that you can you so that when you hold it, your hand feels good. So some mice are simple and easy to hold, while some might have a fancier design with extra button. Now the button, the mouse is, uh, is like a little button booty. It's it's always uh, has a uh, two uh, button on the top, one on the left, and one on the right. When you press this button, it's like giving command to your computer. Also, some mice have a special button in the middle. The middle that you can click like a tiny wheel. And guess what? Some mice are like superhero with extra button on the side for even more strength. So the mouse, the sensor, we're going to talk about the sensor technology of the mouse. Now, many modern uh, mice use optical sensor that tracks the movement using a LED light and a sensor to detect changes in the surface texture. Optical mice do not uh, require, why the optical mice do not require uh, um, a mouse pad and uh, work on a variety of surface. Some high-end mice use laser sensor for increased sens sensitivity and precision. Later my, uh, lesser mice can work on more reflective surface compared to optical mice. So let us make, um, let's make sense of sensor technology in a uh, computer mice in simpler terms. Optical sensor. Think of the optical sensor in, uh, in, in a mouse, like uh, its tiny eyes. The sensor uses a little light to see what's happening on your decks. It is like a super smart detective that can work without a special mouse pad and can understand different surfaces. So you can use it on your wooden desk, a smooth table, or even a notepad, and it will do its job very well. So the sensor, um, the lesser sensor. Now, if if the optical sensor is like a um, a detective, a detective with regular eyes, the lesser sensor is like a detective with super eyes. It is more sensitive and precise. This super detective uh, can work on surface that might reflect a bit, like a shiny surface. It's like having a high um, tech uh, mouse that can handle even uh, trickier situations. 
in simple term the sensor in a computer mouse is like it i whether it is using a regular optical sensor a super precise laser sensor it helps the mouse understand how you are moving it on your desk making sure your cursor moves smoothly on the screen it is like the magic that turns your physical component into digital action on your computer so Connor, we're talking about uh, the connectivity of a computer mouse uh, traditional mouse are connected to the computer via uh, USB or PS cable. This is this is a, a, a PS cable the of the mouse. The this is a, this this picture here is is an example of a traditional mouse. So so the cable provide both power and data transmission. This cable here provide both uh, both power and data transmission. Why wireless mice use various technologies such as Bluetooth or radio frequency to communicate with the with the receiver connected to the computer? They are they are powered by uh, batteries or rechargeable rechargeable cells. So let's unravel the concept of connectivity in a computer uh, mouse in a simpler term. The wire we have the wire that. Um, Mouse. Think of a wired mouse like a friend who always uh, connected to a leash. The mouse has a special cord like a tail, like the one here, that plugs into your computer. This cord not only keep the mouse connected, but also give it power. Just like a pet's leash that both connect the power, that both connect and power your furry friend, it is a reliable way for the mouse to talk to your computer without worrying about battery. The second one is the wireless. The second type of the of, of, uh, mouse is uh, um, the wireless type. Now imagine a wireless mouse as a free uh, spirit, a spirited friend who doesn't need a leash. Instead of a cord, it uses invisible magic waves like Wi-Fi or uh, Bluetooth to talk to a little gadget plugged into your computer. It is like having a secret language between the mouse and your computer. This freedom means no cord, but the mouse need battery or a rechargeable battery inside to stay powered and keep the conversation going. So in simple terms, the way a mouse connects to your laptop is like choosing between a, a pet on a leech that's a wired or a spirit, uh, a free spirit friend with a secret language, wire, which is wireless. Both work well. It depends on whether you prefer the uh, freedom of wireless or the reliability of a wired uh, connection. So the, the next one we're going to talk about is the functionality of a mouse. The left button, the left button, the primary function on the left button is to perform the standard click action. It is commonly used for selecting, for dragging, and for interacting with uh, interacting with on the screen elements. Why the right uh, click? The right uh, mouse button is often used for co context specific action. For example, right clicking on an icon might open a context menu with additional option. So, why the scroll wheel? The scroll wheel here, the scroll wheel when present is used for scrolling through documents, web page, or lists. It can be also be click. It can also be clickable, serving as a third option, the third button. Um, some mice have a uh, extra button on this on the side or top that can be programmed for specific function. They are often found on gaming mice or mice side for productivity. Now let's break down the functionality of a com uh, of a computer mouse in simpler terms. The left button. Think of the left button on the mouse as its main clicker. The main as the main clicker. When you press it, it is like saying, "Hey, computer, I choose you." You use it for basic things like selecting file, clicking on icon or dragging items around. It is like the primary button for making things happen. Why the right uh, button? Now the right button is like the mouse, the mouse secret menu opener. When you right click, it's like saying, show me more option. For example, if you right click on an icon, it might give you a special menu with extra choices. It's like the button for discovering hidden features. 
Why the scroll wheel? The scroll wheel in the middle is like the mouse rolling thread. When you move it, it's like scrolling through a long web page or a uh, uh, list of items. It's like the tool that help you navigate through things without clicking all the time. And guess what? This is often clickable too, so you can use it as a third button. Now, the some some mice are like a super, uh, like superhero with extra power. They have additional button on the side. The this button can be programmed to do specific things. For example, in gaming, they might help you perform special move or productivity. They could be shortcut for quick action. It's like um, having bonus for your mouse to do even more. So in simpler terms, the button on a on a computer mouse are like different tools. The left button is for basic action, while the right button opens the secret menu. So the scroll wheel helps you navigate and the extra button are like a bonus feature for specific tasks. So if your it is your handy companion for doing all sorts of things on your computer. So the, the next one we're going to look at is the usage of the computer mouse. The cursor movement. Moving the mouse across a surface causes the cursor on the computer to move in a corresponding direction. Then clicking, pressing the left or the right button, initiate actions such as selecting, opening, activating, on-screen elements, just like we mentioned earlier, dragging, holding down the, the left mouse button while moving the mouse, allow user to drag and drop file, object or element on the screen, scrolling. So rotating the scroll wheel uh, through content vertically make it easier to navigate lengthy documents or web pages. So let's simplify the usage of a computer mouse. Cursor movement. Imagine you 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 your mouse as a little guard on your computer screen. When you move the mouse on your on your desk, it is like your guarding point in a di in a certain direction. The cursor on your screen follows this movement, just like a magic uh, uh, arrow moving around. Now, clicking is like giving a command on your computer. When you press the left button, it's like saying, I choose this. You can use this for selecting icon, opening files, or even clicking on links. The right button is like a special click for more options, like a secret um. Uh, menu. So in simpler terms, using a computer mouse is like having a magic wand for your computer. You, you guide the cursor, click on things, drag to move them around and scroll to explore digital pages. It is your way of interacting with the uh, digital world in a fun and easier way. So the last one we're going to talk about is the maintenance. Cleaning, uh, uh, regular clean of the mouse sensor and exterior uh, uh, help maintain optimal performance. For wireless uh, mice, replacing or recharging battery is necessary to ensure uh, constant function, uh, functionality. So some mice may have software that allows users to customize button portions and uh, sensitivity and other settings. So, um, the uh, uh, think of cleaning your mouse like giving it uh, a little shower, regular regularly wiping off any dirt or dirt from the bottom of your mouse, where the sensor is dust behind it, um, and the other surface is like keeping its eye the eyes and the body clean so that it can see and work well. So if your mouse is wireless, it needs power to keep uh, um, going. Imagine the mouse battery like its energy source. So when it starts feeling tired, you either replace a battery or recharge it if it is a rechargeable kind. It is like ensuring your mouse always has the energy it needs. So some mice have special software like uh, giving your mouse a brain boost. The software lets you customize things like how the button works and how sensitive the mouse is, just like uh, updating apps on your phone or like, to get new features. Updating your mouse software is like making sure it's always working at its best. Maintaining your um, computer mouse is taking care of your little digital pets. Clean it to keep it looking good. Power it when, when it needs energy and update its software for new tricks. It is your way of making sure your mouse stay happy, healthy, and ready to assist you.
the computer mouse is a fundamental uh, input device that has been an integral part of personal computing device for decades. It provides users a convenient and intuitive way to interact with the uh, graphic uh, interface of modern operating system and software application. So now that leads us to this um, the keyboard. The computer keyboard is a primary input device that allows users to input data, command, and text in a computer. It is an essential tool for various applications from word processing to gaming. So let's simplify the concept of a computer keyboard. Imagine your, compet your computer as a, a smart um, computer keyboard, as a smart, super smart friend that understands everything you want to tell it. The, then the keyboard is like your special language tools to communicate with the friend. So when you want to type something, whether it's a message, a document, or even a search query, or you use the keyboard, it is like having a set of buttons uh, with each letter, number, symbol. When you press the button, you are telling your computer that what you want to do, what you want it to do or say. So the keyboard is your to go to for making, for talking to your computer. It helps you write emails, create documents, play games, and do so much more. It is like the friendly translator between you and your computer, turning your thoughts your thoughts into digital action. In simple terms, the computer keyboard is your magical language tool for telling your computer what you want it to do, whether it is writing, playing, or commanding it to perform various tasks. So we are going to dive uh, in uh, in detail into the details of the computer keyboard. Now we have the physical uh, layout, the alphanumerical keys. The alphanumerical keys. This is the main section of the of the of the keyboard, which include the alphanumerical, the keys, and the the letters and the numbers. Where my cursor is pointing, the the numbers here and the letters arranged in, in a familiar um, Q W E R T Y layout. The uh, the function keys. From one, we have the function key from one to twelve, which is at the top here. Uh, is an is a row of function key at the top. Or uh, they are often used for short code and special function in software application. The numerical um, we have the numerical key. These are uh, a separate section on the right uh, side with numbers and arithmetic symbol for numerical input, the QSOM management key, the arrow key for moving, this is the arrow key for moving the QSOM up and down, this is the arrow key, that's the, this is the QSOM movement key, the arrow key for moving the, the, the QSOM up, down, left and right, the modifier key, the modifier key, we have the, the shift key here, the control key and the alt key, they are the modifier key. They, they are the key that modify the function of the other keys when pressed in combination. So let's break down the physical layout of a computer. The alphanumerical keys, think of the main part of the keyboard, keyboard as the letter and number neighborhood. This is where you find all the letters from A to Z and the numbers from um, zero to nine. It is like the familiar street where you um, type word and number in order you are used to. So the, uh, the F function keys, which is from one to F12, up at the top, they are, there's a row of special keys. Imagine this as the magic function button. They do different things depending on what you're doing. Like pressing one might give you help. Pressing uh, five might refresh something. They are like secret buttons that can um, do special trick. Then the numerical part on the right side, this is a um, separate area with numbers and symbols. Think of this as your number part playground. It is like having a mini calculator on your keyboard. 
perfect for quick numbers, input, and calculation. Now, the cursor movement key. They are the button. They, there are uh, there are arrow key. Picture this as your cursor mover. They help you navigate around like a little digital explorer. The up, the down, the left, the right. It is like having tiny arrow for moving around your digital world. Then the modifier key. Then, then there are these are special keys like uh, the control, the alt, which is alternate. These are like your super key, super power key. When you hold them down and press another key, it is like giving that a special ability. For example, holding shift when pressing a letter gives you a special letter. They are like magic helper that modifies other key. In simple terms, the keyboard is like a city with different neighborhood. The main part is where you type letters and numbers. Up top are special function buttons. On the right is a number play pad, uh, uh, number pad playground. At the bottom are arrows for exploring and there are, and there are super power key for special action. It is your complete tool for taking talking to your computer. Now we have the, we have the additional key. The additional key helps um the additional key um imagine the key you, you as you um the key that you will have the the enter the return key it's used to execute command or start a new line. We have the this is the enter key. Then we have the backspace and the delete key. The backspace and the delete key. Uh, uh, delete key character uh, to the left of the cursor. Then why the delete removes the character to the right of the cursor? The backspace delete character to the left of the cursor. Why the delete? The delete key, which is this one, delete remove character to the right of the cursor. The space bar, this is the space bar here. The space bar insert a space between words or elements. The cap lock, the cap lock key toggles between uppercase and lowercase. The tab key, the tab key here, indent text or move between fields in a form. Now the escape key, the e, the ESC, that's the escape key, often used to cancel an operation or close a dialog box. This is the window. We have the window command here. The window command, the window or the command key opens the start menu on Windows computer or Apple menu on Mac computer. So the enter key now, imagine the enter key as your go button. When you want to start, tell your computer, okay, do this or start a new line, you press enter. It is like hitting the go sign for your command. The box and the delete key. Back is like uh, the backspace is like your oops. Let's go back. It's arresting to the left of where you are typing. Why the delete key on the uh, on the other hand is like let's clear the way forward. Uh, let's clear the way forward. It removes things to the right. Now the space um, bar. The space bar is your word separator. It creates a space between words or elements. This is the space bar. It creates, it creates uh, uh, space between the word or element. It is like hitting the space on a typewriter to leave room between your thoughts. Now, the cap lock, the cap lock is your capitalization toggle. When it is on, it's like shouting in capital letter. When it is off, it is like talking in normal, friendly letter or, or uh, lower case. The tab key, the tab key is your text shifter. It helps you move between different sections or fields in a document or form. It's like creating a little space where you want to shift focus. Now, the ESC, which is the escape key, is your get me out of here key. If you, this is the escape key, where my cursor is pointing, get me out of If you want to cancel something or close a pop-up, you hit the escape it is like an emergency exit for your computer. Now, the window where my cursor is pointing, the window command or the command key. This key is like the menu, main menu button or window computer on the video computer. It opens the start menu on, um, on the Mac computer. It opens the Apple menu. 
it is your gateway to all the important stuff in your computer. So in a simpler term, these key are like uh, assistants, uh, the assistants that help you control and communicate with your computer. Enter, uh, the enter key, start action, the backspace and the delete fixes mistake, the space bar separate words, the cap lock changes letter volume, the tab shifts, uh, the tab uh, key shifts your focus, uh, the escape key gets you out of trouble, and the window or command key open the main menu. There, it is your keyboard toolbox. So we have the special function key, which is the print screen. The print screen here, the, where my cursor is, the print screen captures the current uh, screen or window and copies it to the clipboard. Why the, the scroll lock originally used to control the behavior of the functionality of the modern uh, 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 system? The pause and the break. The pause and the break. The pause and the break, which is this one here, the pause and the break. Um, Passes the output on the screen or break a running process. So they will have the navigate the, the multimedia and the navigation key, and uh, the they will have the multimedia and the navigation key, which helps us. Um, the um, I'm trying to locate it. Um, so now the the play, the pause, the stop, and the volume control key for multimedia they they control the 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 play, the pause, the stop, and the volume control key for multimedia application. Now we have the navigation, uh, the navigation uh, key, the home, the end, the page up, the page down key for quick moving documents, quick uh, moving document, um, the home, we have the home, we have the end, the, where my cursor is pointing. We have the up page. We have the down page key for quick moving within document. So the print screen, think of it as your snap, uh, snapshot button. Where you press it, it takes a picture of what you want on your screen and keep it ready for you to use. Why the scroll lock, the scroll lock, the scroll lock, imagine this as your scrolling controller. Uh, but this, this, it is like um, a key with, with, with limited power. It is used for co control scrolling, but now it is mostly, it mostly watches uh, from the sideline. The pause and break, this is your time out uh, key. If you want to pause what's happening on your screen or, or stop the process, or stop the process, this place here. So uh, this is the pause and the break key. So I'll start the process. Uh, you hit the pause and the or uh, the slide the break. It is called a timeout in a game. It is like calling a timeout in a game. So the multimedia and the this is this are the multimedia and the navigation key. The these are like the entertainment director, the play, the the play. The pause, the stop, they control your music or video. The volume key are like your sound remote, adjusting the volume up and down. So that is it. So in simple terms, the special um, function key to do, um, do specific job, print screen, capture the capture moments. Screen lock is used to control scrolling. The pause, like the break, pauses or stop things. The multimedia key are like your media remote for playing music or videos. Why the navigation key keep you zip around your digital document? 
they are like the they are like the helper that makes your keyboard even more versatile now connectivity most keyboards connect to the computer via a usb cord traditional keyboard uses usb connector why you know usb a connector why the newer version may use us usb c usb c wireless um keyboards use technology like bluetooth or a usb receiver to connect to the computer now let's uh, simplify this uh, the concept of key keyboard uh connectivity the wired connect connection think of this as a as a keyboard with a cord it is connected to your computer using uh uh, a cable imagine it's like a direct phone line between your keyboard and your computer a uh, traditional keyboard might use usb a connector like a familiar plug or a newer model might use usb c connector a newer a uh, smaller uh, it's like a newer smaller plug the wireless co co connection now picture a wireless keyboard as a magic one it connects to your computer without any physical cable. It is like sending your command used through the air. There are two main ways it does. The, through the Bluetooth, is like your keyboard and computer are best friends who can talk to each other wirelessly. USB receiver. This is like a tiny translator. You plug a small USB device into your computer and let your keyboard and computer communicate without cable. So in simple terms, a wired connection is like a direct phone line and a wireless connection is like magic where your keyboard talks to your computer without any physical string attached. So um, ergonomics and design. Um, some keyboards are designed with ergonomic consideration, featuring split or curve design to reduce strain and enhance uh, comfort during extended use. Why some keyboards are illuminated, um, with illuminated keyboards for improved visibility in low light environment. So let me break the concept of ergonomic uh, keyboard and um, uh, backlit keyboard in a simpler form. The ergonomic keyboard, imagine this as a keyboard that, uh, that is customized for your comfort. Some keyboards are designed to be super friendly to your hand. They might be they might be split in the middle or curve, like a comfortable chair for your finger. It is like having uh, a keyboard that fits your hand perfectly, reducing any tiredness or discomfort, especially when you're typing for a, a long time. Why the uh, backlit uh, car keyboard? Think of a backlit keyboard as a keyboard that has its own beauty in light. It is like having a tiny spot for spotlight for each other. This is super useful when you are in a room with dim light or walking at night. The key lights up, making it easier for you to see and type, just like turning on a lamp in a dark room. So in a simple term, an ergonomic keyboard is like a, a simple chair for your finger, designed for extra comfort. And a backlit keyboard is like a, a keyboard with its own built-in light, making it easier for you to type even when the lights uh, low. So maintenance, regular cleaning to remove dust and dirt between uh, um, the keys. Some keyboard allow individual keys to be removed for cleaning or customization, while some keyboard may have uh, software for customization, allowing user uh, to program a function key or adjust key sensitivity. Now, think of this like giving your um, cleaning. When think of this, like giving your key, uh, keyboard a little shower. Regular cleaning is about removing all the tiny speck of dust, crumb, and then that might find their way between the keys. It's like keeping your keyboard neat and tidy, just like you would clean your desktop. Imagine the uh, key remover. Imagine that um, this is a way to tidy up your keyboard individuality. And uh, and in a simpler term, keyboard maintenance is um, about keeping it clean by removing the doors and that maybe even rearranging the key for a new look. And even uh, the software update is like giving our keyboard some 
smart upgrade to make it work better. So the keyboard is a versatile, crucial input, and it is designed it design has evolved over time to accommodate different needs and preferences. It plays a central role in various computing activities, making it a, an integral part of the user interface with the computer. So congratulations, uh, that is where we're gonna wrap it up. Congratulations on completing this basic computer tutorial. You've taken the first step into the incredible world of computing. Remember, a computer is like your digital friend, ready to assist you in various tasks from understanding the essential component to exploring the keyboard and mastering your basic function. Keep exploring, practicing, and don't hesitate to ask questions as you continue your journey in this exciting realm of technology. Thank you.